and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on for some Boros Knights. That's right, we're going to bring back some Knights. We played some Mono Black Knights yesterday, and that deck was pretty exciting. But we're going to try some Boros here today. Uh, as you could, as uh, you can tell by our decks over here, we're playing a bunch of decks that are not green nor black. Um, because I, I kind of play just lots and lots of green and black decks here on the channel, uh, especially in this metagame, there's just... Uh, like black is just a great support color that kind of fits with everything and there's just a lot of strong cards in green so i want to do something a little different today you know move away from those two colors uh we're likely not going to be able to have time for azorius control uh tonight so we're probably gonna be moving that one to tomorrow so if you're watching this video later on youtube and you don't see the azorius control video that would be why but anyway back to our deck here uh we're going to be just playing a very aggressive version of knights and we get some weasel back red caps this is my first time playing this card um but yeah we just got a lot of knights of course we have the worthy knights that uh, create a one one every time we play a knight we have the inspiring veteran that gives all of our knights plus one plus one so those are like our our knight synergy cards also acclaimed contender being able to reveal a knight an aura um, or an equipment or legendary artifact so we get so basically you know we can find Embercle with that but yeah, so we're trying to like play these these cheap knights out here, get the pressure going, and finish our opponent with either Embercleave or also Vener Venerated Luxodon helps Anthemar creatures. Just got a nice little aggressive deck here. I didn't change my sleeves. I was looking at that. We should probably change our sleeves. What's a red-white aggressive sleeve? So we got that Boros. Go this Boros. I don't know. I don't remember last time I used this sleeve. Let's go with this one. Okay, so Boros Knights. Let's give this a try. You've been eyeing these red caps for your cavalcade deck. Yeah, I could see them uh, doing good. So yeah, there's not too much. There's not. There's just really not very much fancy about this deck. Not too much to talk about with it. We're gonna just kind of play some games of Magic here. There you go, Blue Gen. <laughs> Thanks, Ewookies. Come to Todd's streams for the decks, but I stay for the fine music taste. Yeah, y'all on YouTube don't get the the playlist over there. I just have a recording. Man, Luxodon's so good. I'm going to keep it. I'm going to keep it. Hello. My opponent said hello. Um, where you can get the artifact aggro list, you can do exclamation point decks. Always gets you all the deck lists there. Attack. Well, I'm not claiming that this card is going to be a contender, but we'll see if it is. Um, yeah, if you watch on YouTube, or sorry, if you watch on Twitch, then you get the music as well. Uh, so I can kill... I guess I should just kill Oko. I, I obviously want to play... Venerated Luxodon this turn. But I should probably just kill Oko. Can I do both? No, I can't do both because it's tapped. Yeah, see, I four. Can't quite do both. Can you not attack? There you go. Swallow in your deceit. Couldn't quite kill Oko and play an elephant. Alright, the opponent says that's too many creatures from me. I'm out of here. And I agreed. I was like, yeah, that's that's probably too many creatures for you. See ya. Hmm. 
Doesn't seem like there's too much for us to do here. This has their creatures without flying can't block. That's kind of cool. It's basically the only thing that I'm kind of really considering is putting in unbreakable formation. I think I want to because their their plan is going to be to block for the most part. Now I want to cut. I'm going to cut one ember cleave and one tribunal and get the unbreakable formations in here. And it's really difficult to block indestructible creatures, and that's what <clears throat> Unbreakable Formation does, is give you indestructible creatures. Ugh. If we draw a white mana source, how many white mana sources have we got in here? 18, 17, 17, 17. Two of them are tapped, though. I'm just going to mulligan. Yuck. I'll take the seven. <laughs> hey guys, remember check lands? Those are good times. What is this goose doing here? Ha! No block. Got him. Uh yeah, I guess there's no no fries in here. There's I will not just like tons of kings. Welcome to the feast. Not tons of things to fry these days. I make I make almost all the decks myself, but um, sometimes I play like some five O lists from Magic Online. That's what these are. Some of these are today. Um, and sometimes people donate for decks. And I'll play donation decks. And and yeah, sometimes people just recommend decks. And if I you know see a deck that I like, then I'll play those as well. But So I guess kind of all, all of those. But usually... Usually I make, make the decks myself. Yeah, I know, right? We mold a five, and my opponent just does this. Fairness? What bizarre expectation. Turn two, Oko. Turn three, Voracious Hydra removal. <clears throat> but if they're going to have just like a perfect hand, it's good to match up my kind of crappy hand with their perfect hand. Knight. Could match up my five card hand with their. Very good one. Really? I kind of just had like the double fervent champion attacking there. Where they had to double chump to keep Oko alive. I know, Hawkeye. That's a travesty. Couldn't even have it. Let's broaden your existence. Welcome to the feast.
Why is Oko so good? <laughs> Surely you see the humor here. Why is Oko so good? Okay, so one, we'll go one formation, get the other tribunal back in. Considering like waiting till after Worthy Knight to play Venerable Knight to make like that extra creature. But of course decide against it. There. I liked it. Yeah, the Is It deck did well. I liked it. Land. Yay. Yeah, it was, it was fun to play. We were weak to Narset. And so I, the sideboard needs fries. It didn't have fry during the video because we were weak to Narset. But it went well. Um, it's it's uploading to YouTube right now. Another, I don't know, 20. Yeah, I'm just kind of estimating 20, 30 minutes or so. But it's uploading to YouTube right now. Did not want that land. Red cap, you would have been perfect last last turn to be able to play that, then Luxodon. Getting in getting that in here first. So we get to trigger Worthy Knight. First. There's not really a reason to play the land with this deck. We're not getting like some kind of like card draw spell. Would be a great time for an unbreakable formation. Or a Conclave Tribunal. Plus two.
The red here does not activate the Weaselback red cap. So yeah, they made the obvious blocks go down to two. We trade our two best creatures for their Paradise Druid. We need to draw Ember Cleave for Unbreakable Formation. Yeah, yeah, we have Ember Cleaves in here. They can gain six life if they want to make a, another food. Leaf can add two. <clears throat> it's not poison. Uh, looks like they stabilized. They got us. An extra <clears throat> six life a turn, what they can can just gain with if they just want to with Goose and Oko. It's just not really something we can deal with. One card short. One card short. One more card earlier in the game. Yeah, we had we had double red for Ember Cleave because the tournament grounds does cast equipment spells, so the tournament grounds cast Ember Cleave. That's the problem with mulliganing, though. You know, like, we, we mulliganed, we had to put a one drop down to the bottom. If if we don't mulligan, if we get to keep that one drop, we win that. <sighs> Would have been able to play that with a Luxodon earlier. My opponent doesn't like mulliganing. Pretty fast deck. mill deck the vanguard makes humans right or soldiers yeah at least just non-knights Alright, yeah, Thief of Sandy is kind of scary. I'm keeping the Vanguard back. Um, yeah, Dr. K, I, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't, I don't think it necessarily means that something in Standard's getting banned just because they moved up the... The BNR. Uh, 
All right, one on one. That was the easiest win all night. A night full of, a day full of just like super long leagues. Oh, that one wasn't too bad. That match right there. I don't, I don't know, Storm. I don't know what's going on. I don't want to just draw conclusions, though. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. It's true. I wasn't lying when I said it was a fast aggro deck. This looks like a pretty good hand. I'm going to be getting rid of the acclaimed contender. I think I want all these one drops. I guess, have, yeah, Legion's End. Um, Legion's End does kind of make it better to put Champion back. What do you think, Hawkeye? What do you think? All right, we'll put that back. Urban champion away. No, I haven't I haven't seen anybody play a midnight clock proliferate deck. No, it just there's just soldiers, not not human soldiers, just soldiers. Well, if I would have, if I would have put back the acclaimed contender. Would have been able to play the other Fervent Champion here as well. Had another two power haste. Get Soul Diviner back into decks. It's Soul Diviner needs to put counters on things. You can put counters on Ashiok so you can mill more. Not take them away. <laughs> You're working on Simic Ascendancy Midnight Clock right now? Nice. Uh, turn two, I mean, it would be seven damage. You, the first Fervent Champion would attack for one, and then when you play double Fervent, they, they just all attack for two. They're all two power. So it's an extra six. Wow. People do not like playing against the aggro deck. I was going to try out these tectonic rifts. We're going to be able to, to 
play these tectonographs so fast. Just five minutes. Five minutes. Match over. What's my favorite deck right now that you also think is good? Um, I'm not sure about the second part, but you know, right now my favorite deck is the Demir Affinity deck we played yesterday. I'm going to play it again on Friday. Uh, we kind of played against a bunch of Gruul, but it, it was a lot of fun to play. That's my that's my current fa favorite deck. You know, obviously that can change next week and stuff like that. But yeah, the, the Demir Affinity from yesterday was so much fun. Um, yeah, it felt it felt pretty powerful too. I mean, we we did well with it. We lost to Simic Flash, but beat everything else. Our Simic Flash opponent had some really good hands there, also. Yeah, up and at him. Yeah, that was a fun match. <laughs> yeah, Destiny wants me to get to Zoria's control. I know, like, we're just just get five-minute matches. Opponent's down to five cards. Let's play the Weasel. Um, I don't think there are any two mana, two power haste knights. I don't think so. <clears throat> no, I, I can't think of any. McLam. Thanks for the tier one sub. I really appreciate that support. So eight months now. That is awesome. Thank you. That's sub number, what, 19? I thought it was going to be 18, but according to the greatness of MTG bot, it's 19. Uh, hmm. They got some Collision Colossus stuff going on over there. I guess that's why they're attacking into a 2-2. That's fine. I need to keep my 2-2 out so we can make more creatures. And we can race anyway. I don't really need to block 1-1s. We can race. So go with the Fervent Champion here because Fervent Champion just adds a mana for Luxodon. <clears throat> That's only a whole lot of power. On the battlefield over here. 13. Never blocking. <laughs> okay. get this coil in over the icon because the icon could be a little slow in this race potentially we're gonna play two formations over the contenders also the formation unbreakable formations a uh, A good card for racing. Yeah, when your three mana anthem is too slow. Uh, 
I should, I should have put Sonic the Hedgehog or the Flash on the thumbnails for this deck. <clears throat> it's been it's been five minutes since our last win. Because my opponent's playing slow. It's the only reason why it's been five minutes. All right, Storm, have a good night. I'll see you tomorrow. Uh, is it? Is it is uploaded? Yeah, the is it Alliance is on YouTube right now. And it has 26 views. Hey, what's up, Scott? Scott Malad. Getting us there to that 20. All right, another sub goal hit. Let's update. This could be too slow. Update our sub goal tracker, which is just there. There's the info panel underneath the stream here on Twitch. 12 hour stream goals. So we have. That's number 13 out of 20. So we're getting there. We're getting towards another 12 hour stream. You know, we're collecting sub goals like our opponents collecting pelts. Very similarly. Ooh, so fast, so fast. Sir Gwyn, I have not tried any deck with any of the Sir cards. Do I ever play Draft? Um, not really right now, but that is something that... I think I might start doing some drafts for the YouTube channel um, whenever they have ranked drafts out. Because I haven't drafted in a while. I wouldn't mind drafting some more. So I kind of want to try it out, see how, see how it does, see if people watch it and are interested in that kind of stuff. Um, what would be the ideal thing for the drafts? Because I don't think the games are very, or like you know, like like the draft games aren't like the most interesting. And so, what I would like to do for a video, this is going to take some more research by me, is I would like to do the video of just you know like the drafting part. You know, do like you know whatever that takes, like you know twenty thirty minutes. Do the drafting part, and then, um, and then it cuts to. Uh, the like afterwards i'll show like the record and you know you can see like like whatever like how ma how many wins i got and then i kind of do a wrap up of like what worked what didn't work with the deck and that would be the video and so wouldn't wouldn't have like the gameplay that um that requires me to learn how to merge two videos into one because i don't know how to do that but I feel like that could be a pretty good way to to showcase draft. Down, 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 down.
That was a pretty good turn. That was a pretty good turn. Thank you. Yeah, I, I used to play draft all the time. Like, I have a, a pretty big um, experience with drafting. Like, obviously not this specific format, but I used to draft all the time. Um, and I've... So I've played tons and tons of limited in my life, but just not really with... with this format. Costs one less to cast for each attacking creature. So if I only attack with one creature, it costs five. <clears throat> Real Smoive. Let's keep that sub train rolling. I agree. Thank you so much there, Real Smoive. Keeping that hype going. And everybody gets the hype votes in the chat. Thanks, everybody, for that. Okay. I want to just try attacking here. I, I like doing this before the Brontodon can destroy my Ember Cleave. I like getting the extra damage in before letting them untap. And whenever I try this later, their Brontodon just sacks and destroys it. I thought they would attack the other way. They would attack with Brontodon and leave Pelt Collector back. That would make a lot more sense because then you can sacrifice Brontodon and get rid of Embercleave. That would have made a lot more sense. But I can just attack out with... You know, if they had the Pelt Collector back, they could still have Pelt Collector block. I mean, obviously I drew this, but... They should... Yeah, they cuz yeah, like they want to block the veteran and, and and kill the veteran, but if they do that, they still So that was that was a bad attack on my opponent's side. Like it, it wasn't a bad attack to attack with one creature. They just attacked with the wrong creature. All right, three and one. <clears throat> three and one. That was... 14 minutes. But my opponent played really slowly, though. And there was the sideboarding and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah, this deck, this deck has some has some firepower. That's for sure. What if I triple blocked blocked the Bronto? No, I mean, no, they would just still just sack it. They just wouldn't have dealt any damage. They would have just still just sacked it and gotten rid of the Ember Cleave. So, I mean, at, I guess at that point you just shouldn't attack then. Because attacking, like, you can't attack with the Bell Collector there, basically. It allows me to attack with everything.
four lands, a red cap, and a Luxodon. Is that winning? If we draw it, our first five cards are all spells. Um, Lav I don't think Fires is big enough to make Lavinia too relevant. I de depends though. If you if you're like a blue white kind of a, a more aggressive deck where you don't where you know like you and you know obviously you can be playing a third color in there too. You like maybe like a Jeskai hero kind of thing, and or even an Esper hero. You know like a, a one of in an Esper hero list is not unreasonable at all. But Fires is just not... It's not that popular to really want to play a lot of Lavinia. <clears throat> that is true. It stops turn two Oko. That is true. Unless, unless they had a Boreal Grazer. A lot of the, the decks are playing Arboreal Grazers also. So it doesn't stop it then. It only stops it from the Goose. I said I need my first five cards to be spells. Did they miss a land drop? Or did I go first? I might have gone first. Yeah, it's a goblin knight. It's a goblin on a weasel. I would rather cast myself into the abyss than let my blood stain the cap of those monsters. Does it stop copies from Lucky Clover? I don't... I don't... Like, does it? Because that is, that is definitely relevant if it does. Does Lavinia stop copies? So sad with our Luxodons over here. Okay, I didn't think it would. Cause you just you just copy it so it's not casting it. No blue gin, I don't know anything about Twitch chat points. Is that something I need to look into? can look into that. Alright, so yeah, Lavinia does not counter those. I wouldn't expect it to.
Claim Contender, of course, only triggers if you have another knight. I don't have another knight. Discard a card. Sack a creature. Just choose all the modes. Go ahead. Just choose them all. Go crazy. Come on, you prankster. Choose all the modes. All mode. No, Jared, it doesn't work. Alright, we cannot get rid of the wrinkle. Prankster got us. My hand obviously was really bad though. play these frenzies. All right, here we go. <sighs> Our hand was just like lands and elephants last time when we were cutting the elephants. We're going to have to have something else. This will do. We'll go veteran into contender. Contender doesn't get enchantments. No. What if a claim contender could get? Um, uh, what's it called? Experimental Frenzy. That would be pretty cool. All right, we're in the tournament grounds. The beast. I want to get this in before, you know, like while we have another night in play, you know, I want to get that in while we have another night in play. Before we don't have any more nights. Yeah, yeah, I did that. Yeah, I, 
I wouldn't mind doing that. Like, I don't really plan on building around it yet, but I don't mind playing it. We did, like, I did the donation deck, um, the folio reclamation deck before. Worthy Knight or Inspiring Veteran? Yeah, we'll soon attack with Ember Cleave. Soon. That is true. I did walk into Legion's End. That's a good point. That would be kind of bad if my opponent had Legion's End. I do think that they just have, I think they have Murderous Rider here. Five five's hard to attack through. Just don't love trading my five five for a foul Meyer Knight whenever I have this decree. This is not going to work for me. Okay, well, I'm glad they didn't have the Lovestruck Beast block the Veteran, the 5-5 five five block the 2-2. The two two. That would not have worked for me. Can they stay alive? No, they can't, can they? Nope.
Okay. No devout decree. Instead, formation. Make our creatures indestructible. Give them the counters. Ugh. We need two lands. Maybe three lands. Not one. Oh gosh, this hand is ugly. We're keeping it though. I can tribunal on three. Okay. It's a good card to draw. Just, you know, creatures. We want to draw creatures. There's nothing special about that creature, but it's a creature. Doesn't die to their knight. is very quality here. I don't need a, a fifth land. My first draw was, was very good with the knight, but then back-to-back -back lands. I do, really do not need any more of these lands. Interesting. Didn't block with the beast. <clears throat> yeah, maybe Unbreakable Formation will give us a chance. Having tribunal for yuck. having it for something like questing beast or rankle would have been nice. I wouldn't mind drawing a fervent champion, you know, a haste creature. I don't mind that draw at all. That was perfect. Unbreakable formation. So now all, all of my creatures are indestructible. They all have vigilance for this attack. Now my opponent's in a whole lot of trouble. 
they just make that block, they're taking 10 or 11. Dr. Tobias. Thank you so much there, Dr. Tobias. Uh, Funke? Funke? Huh, just attack out? That doesn't make much sense. There you go. Still doesn't make much sense. All right, just serving up Order of Midnight. All right, so I attack out. Rankle Trump's here. Questing Beast gets in front of Veteran, and they go Chump, Chump, and they take two. So they take two. And my veteran dies. I guess I could do this. So they kill Fervent Champion instead. I don't think they can kill me even with Questing Beast from 8. I guess they could just draw... If they have another Rankle, I'm dead. So yeah, if they have a backup Rankle, I die. That's the card they need. So we're, we're dead to Wrinkle, but otherwise they are, like, basically if they don't have Wrinkle, they're dead this next turn. I could have just, what if I just don't attack with this other 1-1? One, one? No, because the 1-1 one, one can't block Questing Beast anyway, so yeah, we're good. So they need Wrinkle. Hopefully no. Blow up, blow up, blow up. That would have been nice to draw, you know, anything that could do something, but I can't I can't complain after drawing the Fervent Champion the last turn. Blow up. And we're four and one. Four and one. Alright. Five win dream. It's alive. Final boss. Let's go. Final boss playlist. If, if y'all ever find more songs on Spotify that you think should go in this final boss playlist, you know, something kind of intense uh, that, or like, you know, like music here that like a lot of people know kind of thing. You know, I have like different um, themes from different uh, movies and stuff like that. If, if any of y'all find any of those, make sure you, sh you send them my way. Because my final boss playlist is only 43 minutes long. So <clears throat> it could stand to be longer. Should I have final countdown in there? I've thought about that one. I don't have Mortal Kombat. Is that another one? Oh, why the land? Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat. Final countdown. Final countdown. My, my opponent's just dead. These champions are so fervent. Looks like Golos. <laughs> They're dead.
Less than two minutes. Dead. Got to go fast. <laughs> yeah, th that's whenever you whenever you've just leveled up too much before the boss fight. You spent too much time leveling up compared to what they expected. All right, I wrote it down there, Borderland Ranger. I feel like this deck needs Barhelion too. It'll be it'll be coming eventually, but I will be making a Parhelion two deck for sure. Though we're going second round for the Parhelion two challenge. I know it's going to have Karn and Parhelion two. That's about all I know right now. Uh, I don't have Genova's boss music from FF seven on here. I don't think. We are five for five with hits there. I'm writing it down though. Y'all have any other ones? You know, keep them coming. All right, I'm, I'm writing that down yet. I don't know if that's. A suggestion or not. Serpent eating the ground? Um... I should have just taken the Fervent Champion, honestly. Rude. So I'm kind of expecting Time Wipe here. Should take in the fervent champion. <laughs> yeah, our opponent had the hand wipe, not the Time wipe.
Realm Cloak Giant. I don't really know why I played the 2-3. The we have lethal here. There we go. Finish it out. It's as fast as it gets. Even with the sweeper on turn 5. Ooh. We got 80 gems. To go along with our 2100 gold. And that would be a 5 0 oh, there, ladies and gentlemen, for Boros Knights. Darn, it was 5 1. Never mind. 5 1. There we go. <laughs> 5 win league for Boros Knights. I would have to say, uh, I, was, I was certainly impressed by Ember Cleave. That card was awesome, and Fervent Champion was very impressive as well. Weaselback Redcap did a good job. That was a that was a good one drop. I like these one drops that we got in here. Sky Knight Vanguard uh, was the best that I've ever seen. Sky Knight Vanguard. I've played it with different in different like hero builds before, but it it did it very well for us in this build. Um, so yeah, this de this deck went per did pretty well. Um, I don't love a lot of the stuff in the sideboard. Like I don't really like Tajik or Un Unchained Berserker. I don't like those two cards specifically. And I kind of wouldn't mind just having Unbreakable Formations main deck, maybe instead of like Icon of Ancestry. Like this this feels like a, a good Unbreakable Formation deck. Um, but maybe that's supposed to be main instead of Icon. But... So you worry about facing Flash or Selesny Adventures with how wide they go. Well, Flash, you, you can go under Flash, like, you know, like with these these creatures, it's it's hard for them to counter them. But of course they can, you know, the the Flash 4-4 is rough, but then you also have Embercleave. Like Embercleave is just kind of like the answer, right? Like they flash in a, a Nightpack Ambusher to block, you have Embercleave. It's possible there should be a fourth one of these in the sideboard for like that kind of, for that kind of stuff. But then also again, like how Selesny Adventures goes really wide, well you just you just Ember Cleave them, kind of thing. So I could see a fourth Ember Cleave in the sideboard. Uh, Unbreakable Formation is just awesome against Selesny Adventures. I I feel like this should be like a two of in the main deck, like maybe over like one Tribunal and, and an Icon. Hey Rifle Check, thanks for the Twitch Prime sub there. I appreciate that. Um, I don't think the deck really needs uh, Circle of Loyalty. I don't know. Circle of Loyalty is kind of, kind of slow. I guess you only need, you only need like three creatures in play, and then it's Icon. But meh. The thing, I, I guess, what I what I do like about, I probably like it more than Icon in this deck. What I do like about it is like these. These humans that you make with Worthy Knight and the soldiers that you make with Vanguard, these all get plus one, plus one also from Circle of Loyalty. Because it's just your creatures in general get plus one, plus one. Yeah, I mean, everything gets okayed. Yeah, Unbreakable Formation is just great. I feel like that this is, like, the card that should be over here. You know, like, it, we should have, like, two of these. In the main, at least one. I think icon. I think icon can go. <clears throat> at the very least, it should be this. It should be unbreakable in the main, not icon. At the very least, like that's that's something to change. I don't know if you can fit another unbreakable main or not, or if you want to. But at the very least, there should be one. Um. <clears throat> No, I would rather play Luxodons than, than a Circle of Loyalty there. Luxodons are pretty strong. Um, but I think... <clears throat> so at the very least, that change. And then... Again, I, I don't really like these Unclaimed Berserkers or the Tajiks. 
And so, like, that's four extra slots that could be different things. Like, maybe another, like, Frenzy. And then maybe another Lava Coil. I don't know. I don't know exactly. Like, that's the thing is I don't know exactly what to do with those slots. You know, I'd, so basically kind of if, if you have different cards that you like playing um, in the sideboard, I, I think that Tajik and Un Unclaimed Preserker are both easily replaceable. Tajik's good versus a Red Sweeper. Yeah, I suppose. They can also just kill the Tajik and then Red Sweeper. Like, I'd rather just have, like, another Frenzy or something to rebuild. I don't know. It just doesn't happen very often for that that to happen. Yeah, I could have some fries if you want some. If you like, if you're not getting filled up by your dinner and need a side of fries, you can do that. Uh, chance, I don't no, I would, wouldn't do chance for glory at all. It's chance for glory is the kind of card that allows you to win games that you are almost certainly going to be winning anyway especially if you had like any other regular card it chance for glory is not winning games that you're losing kind of thing um i heard you blue Jin. i wrote it down i heard you um 61 cards main one chance for glory so there we go. Uh, I wouldn't mind a fourth Ember Cleave in the board for decks that are blocking a lot that you really want that Ember Cleave. So I wouldn't mind a fourth Ember Cleave in the board. I think that like I think either like you know a third or maybe a fourth Frenzy, like you know another another Frenzy or two, another Ember Cleave, those and then you know maybe a Fry or two. Those can be some other sideboard slots there. All right. So if you're watching the video later on YouTube though. Uh, please hit the like and subscribe buttons over there. And also, of course, like always, leave some comments. Let me know what you think of the deck. Um, you know, if you're trying this deck out, how's it going for you? Um, this deck is is kind of budget friendly a little bit. We, at least we have like some commons and uncommons. We don't see a lot of those in standard, but there's four, eight, 12, 16, and then... Yeah, there's 16 main rares in the in the main deck, uh, then your three mythics, and there's the mana base. Uh, it's not really that budget friendly. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, there we go. So that's Boros Knights. So uh, leave those comments. Let me know what you what you want to do with the sideboard, and all that kind of stuff there as well. But thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video. Yeah, Clarion could be a sideboard card, uh, especially for the the lifelink part to help you win races. Like, and if you're just behind, you can cast it on the front part. I like Clarion a lot. I think that could definitely be a sideboard card.